Welcome to Rome. Ah, the Eternal City, a city of ancient history, world wonders, and some of the best food we've come across. With thousands of years of history to explore and Rome's notoriously complicated ticketing systems, it can be challenging to see all of Rome's must-see spots. In this travel guide, we'll be sharing key travel tips and walking through the top things you need to see when you visit Rome, Italy. The first spot you'll need to see in Rome is Piazza Navona. Being centrally located in the heart of Rome, this ancient chariot racetrack is now home to one of Italy's prettiest piazzas. Known for its stunning Baroque architecture, the square is surrounded by beautifully preserved buildings, making it a hub of historical and artistic significance. The centerpiece of Piazza Navona is the captivating fountain of the Four Rivers, designed by renowned sculptor Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Its sprawling open space is perfect for strolling, people watching, and enjoying the vibrant atmosphere. The square is also home to numerous cafes, restaurants, and street performers, creating a lively and bustling ambiance that attracts both locals and tourists alike. Piazza Navona is the perfect spot to relax, enjoy gelato, or appreciate Rome's incredible history. This was one of our favorite spots in Rome and is a great central area to explore and get your bearings in the eternal city. We are in Piazza Navona right now and we were completely blown away whenever we walked around the corner and saw this gorgeous fountain surrounded by beautiful, beautiful buildings. The fountain behind me is called the Four Rivers Fountain and each statue on the corner of this fountain represents a different real life river. So it's kind of cool to dig into the symbolism here. About a 12 minute walk away, you'll find the next spot you need to see in Rome and that's the iconic iconic Trevi Fountain. Being older than the United States, this is one of the marvels of Rome's Baroque era. The name Trevi comes from the Latin word meaning the intersection of three streets, which is very fitting seeing as this fountain is accessible from many of the key roads in the heart of Rome. Built in the 18th century, the fountain features a magnificent sculpture of Neptune, the Roman god of the sea. The Trevi Fountain attracts tourists from all over the world who come to admire its splendor and make a wish for good luck. This fountain has been made famous by its appearance in many films such as La Dolce Vita and of course everyone's favorite, the Lizzie McGuire movie. While here, watch out for pickpockets and enjoy the terrific fountain. We are at the Trevi Fountain right now. As you can see, it is pretty busy. Legend has it if you throw in one euro into the fountain, you're destined to return to Rome. Two euro grants you love, and there's a bunch of other traditions here as well. So I'm gonna throw in my 20 cents. I'm not exactly sure what that'll get me, but here goes nothing. <laughs> and this one's for Lizzie. Let's this will work. Another key spot you need to visit while in Rome is the Spanish Steps. This iconic staircase consists of 135 steps that connect Piazza de España at the base with the Trinita de Monti Church at the top. Built in the 18th century, the Spanish Steps are a symbol of elegance in Rome and have inspired many writers and artists throughout the years. The elegant design provides a picturesque backdrop for people to relax, socialize, and enjoy the charming atmosphere. It's also a vibrant area surrounded by high-end shops, art galleries, and cozy cafes, making it an ideal place for shopping and indulging in the Roman lifestyle. If you can, climbing the 135 steps at the top offers you one of the most panoramic views in Rome. We'll cover another overlook later in this video that's less crowded and offers even better views, so stay tuned. So we've made it to the top of the Spanish steps. Man, I wish there was a Spanish escalator because if you can't tell, I am sweaty and winded. I have heard there is an elevator and we'll link in the description box where you can find access to that. So we are at the Spanish steps right now and actually there's nothing Spanish about this place. It was funded by the French and designed and built by the Italians. It's only called the Spanish steps because it used to be located near the old Spanish embassy, but you can see it's a beautiful spot. Courtney and I recognize this place from the amazing TV show, The Amazing Race, which we've actually applied to be on three times now and all our applications have been rejected. So if anyone knows a way to get us on The Amazing Race, please let us know in the comments below. And no trip to Rome is complete without visiting the next item on our list, and that's the Pantheon. Located in the Piazza della Rotunda, this is another attraction that's centrally located. Being nearly 2,000 years old, this massive structure is one of the most well-preserved and influential buildings in ancient Rome. It is a marvel both inside and out. It was built between the years of 118 and 125 AD by the Emperor Hadrian. The Pantheon exhibits a remarkable blend of architectural styles, combining elements of Greek and Roman design. It's renowned for its massive dome, which was the largest in the world until the modern era. The temple was initially dedicated to all the gods of the Roman religion, thus its name, Pantheon. Over time, however, it was primarily associated with the worship of the major Roman gods. To get in, you actually need tickets, which cost five euros. You can pre-purchase these from the official website, which we'll link below. Just be warned, the website is clunky, so we opted to buy our tickets on site, which was fine. Just be where you can only pay with a card on site, so make sure you have a credit card handy. At peak hours, the entry lines are long, but actually move somewhat quickly. We waited about 15 minutes to reach the front and purchase our tickets. Inside the Pantheon, you see the engineering marvel of its iconic dome, as well as the center opening, which casts a sphere of light on the Pantheon walls. We recommend downloading the Rick Steves app that has a 30 minute audio tour that walks through the key details to observe in the Pantheon. 
So we're inside the Pantheon. This has been a holy structure for over a thousand years. There's actually a few famous people buried here. There's Raphael, the Renaissance man, and Ninja Turtle. There's some Italian royalty, and there's even the founder of Margarita Pizza. So besides the architectural wonders of this great building, it's absolutely worth checking in to see the history. Another spot you need to visit in Rome is the Vatican City, which is the spiritual and governing headquarters of the Catholic Church. Believe it or not, even though the entire Vatican City is located within Rome, it's actually its own country with a population of over 500 people. The Vatican is home to St. Peter's Square, a beautiful plaza surrounded by 140 saint statues, St. Peter's Basilica, the largest church in the world, the Sistine Chapel, housing some of the world's most famous paintings, and the Vatican Museums, which hold many of the world's priceless treasures. Depending on what you'd like to see, you'll need different tickets. We cover in our Vatican travel guide all you need to know when planning a trip to the Vatican, including how to skip its notorious lines, purchase the right tickets, and even score an audience with the Pope. So check that out if you're interested. This next spot in our list is a hidden gem in Rome. It might have been one of our favorite spots we visited, and that's the Church of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Built in the 17th century, it's dedicated to the founder of the Jesuit order, St. Ignatius of Loyola. The church is known for its stunning Baroque architecture, featuring a grand facade adorned by sculptures and elaborate frescoes. Being located in Campo Marzio, this is another centrally located attraction in Rome. And don't tell Michelangelo we said this, but we felt the church's painted ceilings were even more impressive than the Sistine chapels. There are portions of the ceiling dedicated to the four discovered continents at that time, and this church has one of the coolest illusions in the city. The church didn't have money at the time to construct an actual dome, so they hired an artist to paint the illusion of a dome on a flat surface, and the results are amazing. It's near impossible to tell this dome isn't real, and the cupola of the dome actually appears to change sides as you walk around the room. There's even a large mirror in the center of the church that allows you to better observe the ceiling's details without straining your neck. Just be aware you may need to wait in a long line to have the mirror to yourself as it's become quite the tourist attraction. The next thing you have to see in Rome is the Colosseum. Being about a 20 minute walk from the Pantheon, the Colosseum is probably one of the most famous structures in Rome and is one of the seven wonders of the world. Being so popular, you're going to need to secure tickets to enter. The cheapest way to do this is to use the official website, which we'll link below. Tickets become available 30 days in advance and are released in time batches. For example, the 9 a.m. tickets become available 30 days prior at 9 a.m. Rome time. So if you're in a different time zone, it's recommended to set an alarm. Sadly, bots and tour companies are quick to buy up tickets, so you'll need to hammer your refresh button and try to pounce on tickets as soon as they become available. We found afternoon tickets were much easier to get, and I've heard additional general admission tickets are released seven days prior. Tickets to the Coliseum's underground are the hardest to get, and if you can't get tickets, you may be able to look online for resellers. Once inside, you'll get incredible views of the iconic Stadium of the Gladiators and learn its history. We recommend downloading the free Rick Steves audio tour of the Colosseum and popping in an earbud to learn the history here. Built during the Flavian dynasty in 70 to 80 AD, it's considered one of the greatest architectural achievements of the ancient Roman Empire. The Colosseum was primarily used for gladiatorial contests, animal hunts, and dramatic performances, attracting thousands of spectators. With a capacity of approximately 50,000 people, it was an impressive feat of engineering, featuring a complex network of underground chambers, elevators, and trapdoors. Despite centuries of damage and decay, the Colosseum still stands as a symbol of Rome's grandeur and is an iconic landmark visited by millions of tourists every year. We're in the Colosseum right now. This is one of the most famous buildings in Rome, and it has a pretty dark history with gladiators, animal fights, and lots of death. I'm really happy to be here because this is actually our second wonder we're crossing off our list. We were in Machu Picchu last year, so I wonder what wonder we'll check off next. And really quickly, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is us. If you didn't know, we own our own Amazon store where we sell the packing cubes that you see me holding and behind me here. I actually designed each of these cubes from scratch so that we could help people make their travels a little easier. As you can see, we have two sizes here. We have the small and the large. The small sizes fit in your average carry-on and fit more lightweight summer clothes or kids' clothing. Whereas the large sizes, you can fit pretty much anything you want and are great, especially if you're packing just for a weekend trip. Thank you all so much for considering supporting our channel. It really means the world to us and keeps us on the road. Now let's head back to the video. And while near the Colosseum, you need to wander over to one of the most significant spots in ancient Rome, the Roman Forum. Your Colosseum ticket provides you with access to the Roman Forum for 24 hours after your Colosseum entry time. So if you can, this is a great spot to visit after. The Roman Forum was a central marketplace and civic center of ancient Rome. It served as the political, social, and commercial heart of the city, hosting a variety of public events, religious ceremonies, and political discussions. Spanning over centuries, the Roman Forum was an architectural marvel with numerous temples, government buildings, and monuments, including the iconic Arch of Septimus Severus and the Temple of Saturn. It was a bustling hub of activity where citizens gathered to engage in discourse, shop, and witness gladiatorial contests. The Roman Forum houses some of the most impressive remains of the ancient heart of Rome, where people like Caesar were burned and the most significant government and religious 
religious buildings were built. Here you'll find massive columns, impressive ruins, and if you're visiting in the summer, oppressive heat, given its lack of shape. There are several water fountains scattered around the forum, so bring a bottle to fill up if you can. And while we are no way sponsored by Rick Steves, we will again recommend his free audio guide, which has a great walking tour through the Roman Forum. One of our favorite things about the Roman Forum is it grants you the best view of the Colosseum, so if you want to avoid pictures with all the hordes of people gathering outside the Colosseum, come into the Forum and locate the Temple of Venus, and it gives you amazing views of the Colosseum. Absolutely worth checking out. And while you're thinking of the ancient Romans, one of the crazy things to ponder while you're walking through this city is when you see buildings like this behind me with all these holes in them, because the barbarians and the people that came after the fall of Rome didn't know how to make iron, and they actually would just tap into all these buildings and try to chisel away and find the iron pieces that were holding these buildings together. Talk about trying to find a needle in a marble stack. Next on our list, we're going to be crossing the Tiber River and heading on over to a neighborhood known as Trastevere. This is the area we stayed when visiting Rome and would highly recommend it to visitors as it's a 15 to 30 minute walk to just about everything on this guide. It's also a magical part of Rome that's just about as close as you can get to the picture perfect Italian streets lined with restaurants. Here you'll find amazing food, gelato shops, and entertaining nightlife. We'll be covering some of the best iconic foods you need to try on your trip to Rome in our upcoming Rome food tour, several of which are in this area. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. While wandering the quaint streets of Tristavery, you may want to pop up and visit Genicolo, which is one of the seven hills of Rome. This will grant you one of the best views of the Roman skyline, and we've heard it's a great spot to catch a sunset. If you aren't there in the evening, they do fire a cannon at noon every day, which can be fun to see as well. Well, maybe not a top thing to do in Rome, we'd stumble across a Steelers bar in the heart of Rome, which being from Pittsburgh, we love and is worth checking out if you're a football fan as well. We'll link this in the description box below if you're interested. So we're about the Piazza Navona right now, and we just stumbled into what looks to be a Steelers bar. Probably the only Steelers bar in Rome, let alone Italy. This place feels like you're stepping right back into America. There's pendants of all the universities here, tons and tons of Steelers gear. I think Jesus over there even has a Steelers helmet on, kind of like the Immaculate Reception. With country music playing, I can't think of a better slice of Americana in the center of Rome. If you're a Steelers fan, you have to check this place out. Cheers. And we know you can't fit everything to do in Rome in one video, but there are a few other spots worth checking out, like the Complesso de Vitriono, which is a grand but more modern structure, the Castel Sant'Angelo, which is an ancient mausoleum with great history, the Basilica Santa Maria Maggiore, another breathtaking church, the Borghese Gallery, a world-class museum, and much, much more. If there are any spots we miss, please let future travelers know in the comments below. Please hit that like button if you found this video useful, and subscribe to our channel to see all of our upcoming Italy videos. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.